Hello guys, so for today's video, we are going to fix this refrigerated container. As you can see, the set point is minus 25 degrees Celsius and it can only get up to minus 17.8 degrees Celsius. And checking the side glass, we are having a low refrigerant. So this is what we are going to fix for today. And I am also going to teach you on how to do the proper charging of refrigerant inside this refrigeration system and how we will avoid diffusing this refrigerant into our environment so come and join me in this new learning Since the refrigeration system is a closed loop system, so if you have a sudden drop in pressure, it means that you might have leak into the system. So this is the first thing that we are going to do. We will use this leak detector. So I thoroughly check the pipings of this refrigeration system and I can say that I cannot find any source of leak. So I have decided to check the pressures using our manifold gauge. So we will use this manifold gauge and please take note that the color blue adapter is connected or should be connected into the suction side and the red adapter will be connected to the discharge side. So we have different types of manifold gauges and their adapter, but for this, this is what we have on board. As you may have noticed that the suction service valves as well as the discharge service valves are still sealed. So what we're going to do is to open this or break this seal and then we will open also or remove the cups for all the service valves. After removing the seal and opening the cup for the service valves, then I have proceeded in checking if we have also leaked onto this. So unfortunately, I was not able to take a clips onto this while checking for leak, but I have found out that there is no leak onto the system. So the first step that we are going to do is to connect the suction side of our manifold gauge. So just like what I have said, the blue adapter is for the suction side. So the first thing that we need to do is to loosen the blue cup so that we will be able to insert it. And then we can actually pull this down, the lock, so that we can insert it properly. And then when it is already inside, then we can uh, loose or release the lock and then we can now tighten the adapter. Please ensure to tighten it properly so that we will avoid having leak once we started charging. After that, we will connect the red one. Same as what we did onto the suction side, we will loosen the cup and then we will put it inside and release the lock. And then we will again tighten it properly. As a piece of advice, please always use the proper tools onto these service valves as they are prone to damage. Please ensure that the manifold gauge are fully tightened. Again, this is to avoid leak once we open the service valve. After ensuring that everything is tight, now we are ready to open the service valve on the discharge side to see what is our pressure. We will put the service valve into the mid seat. Notice that the manifold gauge start moving now after we open the service valve and we can say that we are only having around 125 PSI or it is equivalent to around 8.6 bar. Normally, the working pressure of this kind of unit is around 9.5 bar pressure. 
So after opening the discharge side, we will now open the suction side of our service valve. And after opening the service valve, we can get around 0 PSI. The container is fitted with this pressure transmitter and checking the digital or the reading from our uh, controller, we can get around 8.6 bar pressure. So the manifold gauge and our uh, controller is having the same uh, amount of pressure. So it means that we have actual 8.6 bar pressure or 125 PSI. So I went to my reaper store and took this R134A gas unitor type of refrigerant. So we will connect the other hose into our bottle. Since the red one is on the discharge side and the blue one is onto our suction side and this yellow one is the one that will be connected into our refrigerant bottle. So I have used different flares so that we will be able to connect our hose. After connecting the hose into our refrigerant bottle, please take note of these very important steps. First, we only need to crack open the refrigerant bottle. Then we need to purge the air present onto the hose. This is to avoid charging or putting the air present onto the hose into our refrigeration system. After that, we can now fully open the refrigerant bottle. And then the flow of refrigerant is from yellow hose. Since the bottle is now in gas state, then we will charge it onto our suction side. And we only need to open now this service valve of our manifold gauge. As you can see, the pressure went up onto our suction side and we now have a flow of refrigerant or we are now charging refrigerant into our system from the suction side of this compressor. And we will wait for the discharge side to go around 140 PSI and we will wait for the side glass to get full. After reaching the desired pressure onto our discharge side, I stop the charging onto our system. After closing the valve onto our manifold gauge, I waited for some time to observe if the pressure will hold at 140 PSI. And checking the side glass, we now have a full refrigerant onto our system. And then I check the controller reading of our pressure and we can get around 9.5 bar pressure which is equal to our manifold gauge. And observing the unit, it has now started pulling down, which is supplying minus 25.5 degrees Celsius and a return temperature of minus 19.6 degrees Celsius. Now, the next step is on how to remove the manifold gauge without diffusing any refrigerant into our environment or into our atmosphere. Since the pressure is holding at 140 PSI, we can now remove the manifold gauge. In removing, we need to analyze this. We still have refrigerant onto the yellow hose. So in order to remove this refrigerant onto the yellow hose, we need to close this refrigerant bottle. So the remaining refrigerant now onto the yellow hose, we need to charge in. To our refrigeration system so we will open again the service valve onto our manifold gauge and now we completely remove the refrigerant into the yellow hose and we also have refrigerant onto our red hose so what we need to do is to also put this refrigerant back into our refrigeration system so we need to back seat this service valve you might be wondering why or it might be in liquid state no because the service valve or the discharge service valve is just right after your compressor so we can charge this back to our suction side of the compressor so opening the red one will now go into our suction side so as you can see the 
a refrigerant present into our red host is now being charged back into our system. So they will have equal pressure. So in this way, there is no more refrigerant present into our manifold gauge. So we can now close all the valves and we can now start removing the connections into our system. So I backseated the surface valve and then I started removing the discharge uh, hose or of our manifold gauge. We just need to loosen the disc and then we can now ready to pull it out. And after that, I also removed the suction hose onto our um, service valve. After removing the hoses, ensure that you will be able to put back all the covers, all the cups to protect our service valves from having dirt or moisture so that once or next time we will do servicing into our system, we will avoid having contaminants as well as to avoid or this will prevent a leakage onto our service valves. So after charging, I will go back the next day to check the condition of the unit. Hello guys, so good morning and we will check now the reefer and see the condition and I hope it's still okay. So after 24 hours of running, I want to see if there is a changes in the pressure or the level of refrigerant. As you can see, the temperatures are in range. We now have around minus 25.3 uh, return temperature and it is supplying around minus 30.7 degrees Celsius and the side glass is, is still full. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and this is your Lucky Jake and see you.